Welcome back guys, I trust you've been staying safe. Now, this true crime story is coming to you from Nigeria in West Africa. I know, I'm bringing you a lot of crazy stories from Nigeria and it doesn't get less crazier because in this crime story, two friends, women for that matter, were caught up in a fight. We don't yet know the reason why, but some way, somehow, one of them got a knife and in the course of the fight happened to slash one of the veins of the other friend that she was quarreling or fighting with and this lady has eventually bled out and lost her life this true crime story i think could have easily been avoided it is very annoying actually when i watched the footage i can't post it here because of youtube's graphic content policies and I respect it so I can't post it here but when I watched the video I got incensed and very angry here is why you would see these two ladies fighting literally but it seems they are students and there are other colleagues of theirs in the apartment with them you see them actually walking around and watching them fight and then one of them is actually filming the fight as it goes on. And I don't understand why in these times especially, there are certain people who feel the sudden responsibility to be responsible for filming everything that goes on, even when things have escalated to a point that somebody is actually losing his or her life in what is transpiring in real time. These people who are filming will not stop to render help or aid. They will continue filming till the worst happens and they will still film the worst. I just don't get it. It seems there is this sort of need or this hunger or thirst by some people to be the first to break bad news. That is what I am getting from this video. In as much as the fight was uncalled for and we don't even know why they were fighting for that matter, I think that by virtue of they being in the same apartment with the other people who were there watching, it then creates a responsibility on these ladies who were with them in the apartment to separate them and not just be walking by and watching them as if there's nothing to it. It is not enough that somebody is shouting, stop, stop, stop. You could have actually intervened. But then to be fair, the person who had a knife after slashing the victim actually threatened them not to get close but that notwithstanding i think that there's a lot they could have done even if they couldn't have separated them themselves i believe that they could have found help to come in and break up the fight instead of just hovering around like it's a normal day and one of them actually seeing the need to film everything even at the point where the one who was slashed was actually losing blood and eventually passed out and passed on. This is a very senseless thing. I, I don't get it. From whatever they were fighting about through to the people in the room, I believe common sense was out of the window and unfortunately, a life has been lost as a result. And I'm going to take the breakdown even further. Starting from the two men who were fighting, RIP to the victim and condolences to her family but why do you actually get yourself involved in this what were you trying to prove sometimes it gets tempting you need to stand your ground or you want to stand your ground and prove a point but if it escalates to a certain point it makes more sense to just walk away because it's not worth it anymore as it stands now her life has been lost and i can bet that whatever it was they were fighting about was definitely not worth the loss of her life. But now that is how this has transpired. She has lost her life. And to the other person who actually took her life with that knife, she is actually alleged to be her friend. So how did it get to this point? I know that every friendship has its ups and downs, but what happened to self-control? What happened to drawing a line you don't cross? It's not that unusual for you to see friends arguing or sometimes 
even Helen insults at each other. But it's very unusual to see people who say they are friends actually trading punches and someone even getting a knife. I just don't get it. What sort of friendship did they have and how real was the friendship? Because after this, people also started leaning in, cautioning people that be careful of the people you call your friends and bring close because some of them, they are not really your friends. They are people you see every day, but they are not necessarily your friends. And there's a difference. You may be seeing somebody every day by virtue of where you live or where you work. But that doesn't make the person your friend. Friendship goes beyond that. Friendship is a code. Friendship is a philosophy. It's a principled relationship which is built on issues about trust, issues about respect, issues about empathy and whatsoever, such that it should be the closest after blood relations. So I don't understand why somebody will say, this is my friend. And then the next thing we see, You've used the knife on them. So when this case came out, I was watching the footage and I kept asking myself, why are people not rushing to her aid? Because when she was slashed, you could see she was bleeding profusely. And one of the ladies in the room was actually shouting to her that she should hold the wound without actually going over to help her do that. They were just shouting instructions and screaming to God. Well, this is the punchline I have for them. There is no way God would descend from heaven to come and treat that wound. You being there at that moment makes you the best person to administer whatever intervention God would intervene with. So the prayer you are praying to God, God help us, whatever, you are the conduit to append that. They could have just taken steps to administer first aid instead of standing by and shouting to the victim who at this point I'm sure was even confused because of what she was going through. They should have gotten closer and then just defuse the situation or even just taking the victim away and then administered first aid, rush her to a hospital instead of sitting by and shouting instructions and one of them still filming. I don't get it. Little did this person know he or she was actually filming the last moments of this victim's life. And I hope he or she is happy she has this video because it's very stupid and it shows the type of person that you are. And I'm sure if it was his or her relative in that situation, she would have actually dropped the phone and rushed to help. That is how fake some people who say their friends are. I'm not trying to be harsh, but I think this is truth that needs to be told. I just don't get it. Now, it also brought to bear the conversation about how come there is so much lack of knowledge with regards to the administration of first aid. Most people don't know what to do if something is happening, if somebody is choking, if somebody is bleeding like this. Most people don't know what to do. But, you know, per my research, the injury that this victim sustained in this attack was basically an injury or a slice to her artery, one of the major ones. And a simple first aid could have saved her life because she actually bled out and passed out and passed on. But a simple first aid could have saved this girl's life because it was an arterial bleeding. So, per my research with some medical folks, all these people needed to do was to have tied a tourniquet above the cut as blood is gushing out to the external breach. Now, <clears throat> by so doing, they should have ensured that the tourniquet is very tight and then they can stick a lock to use it. And they would ensure that this hand is raised. You know, simple, simple things to stop the pressure from pushing the blood out and she bleeding out and she could have been saved having left her like that technically and per medical feedback she stood no chance after bleeding out like that for over three minutes she was gone and she also even walking around made things worse for her so it is very unfortunate it is really really unfortunate and 
I don't know how these friends would sleep at night if even they can. I'm sure they will because people like this, most of them don't have conscience. But just so it's not that I'm not giving them the benefit of the doubt. Let's just take it that some of them might also have been confused and didn't know what to do because they lack the first aid knowledge. But then at least you could have just whisked her away to the hospital instead of walking around, standing around. At least that could have given a chance. Maybe somebody even in the building might have had the first aid knowledge and come in to assist. And this lady might still be alive. And I don't know why it's also being captioned by some people that the culprit mistakenly took the life of her friend during that fight. I don't think that is a mistake. The moment you took a knife and went into that fight, you knew the possibilities that could come out of that. Or you should have known that one of the possibilities entering the fight with the knife could mean death to the other person you are fighting whom you are still saying is your friend. It's a stupidity all round. I can't say it any less. I can't say it any worse. Calling it as it is. I think that the culprit should face the full rigors of the law and the people around. I don't know how conspiracy would come in. I don't know how they may fit into the legal conversation. But if it turns out they are able to be pinned or tied with something legal as far as whatever they were doing negligently or sitting and watching looking on i'm hoping they also get whatever is due them because you know you owe a responsibility to anyone you find yourself in a space with such that if these things are going on you have to step in you don't just sit by take a phone and video as though you are shooting a series or it's a skit or you want to be the first to break that bad news well she lost her life Go break it. And it seems this person has broken it. I just don't get it. But that is my opinion. Let me know what you think. I think this could have been easily avoided. With just a little bit of common sense. And a higher sense of urgency. From those who were around when this issue was unfolding. But unfortunately, we are where we are now. And it's so, so unfortunate. Leave your comments in the comment section. But hey. As you step out there, in case you begin to find yourself in moments like this, my advice is just back out. It's not worth it. There are a lot of crazy people out there. There are people who are burdened with psychological issues, hardships in life, dramatic issues, and they have no way of dealing with it. And they are just walking around with it. And the moment you engage in things like this, you trigger them and they unleash on you. You might think it's just going to be something about dialogue, but before you can say Jack, some of these people might have taken the whole thing all the way up to a very, very dangerous situation. Keep an eye out and stay safe out there. I'll catch you on the next one.